learning of computer networks and security we are going to start with the module 5 that is multimedia networking we have the multimedia networking chapter 7 we can refer from the textbook computer networking top-down approach the authors are Kuros and Ross. The topics that we are going to cover here in multimedia networking are the first topic is multimedia networking applications. The second topic is streaming stored video application. And the next topic that we are going to cover is voice over IP and then protocols for real time conversational application. Okay, so these are the first four topics which we are going to cover. Let us start with the first topic that is multimedia networking applications. Let us begin with the discussion of properties of video so what is the meaning of a video first of all video is the one which actually is a collection of frames continuous frames right so in order to watch a video one thing is a user needs high bandwidth if he wants to watch in the sense he can watch online or offline so here online watching is something like he has to stream a video so streaming application it should be with the help of a streaming application the streaming should take place so what is the meaning of streaming there so continuously you are requesting for the bytes that is upstreaming that is requesting happening to the remote server where the actual video is or the copy of the video is residing and the server should respond back that is downloading part now so server should respond back with the requested video file so upstreaming and downstreaming takes place and here how the server sends the requested uh, video file it can be sent byte by byte or it, few bytes of the entire video it's not that entire video is sent by the server it's part by part the server is sending the video and you call that say, uh, particular uh, transfer as streaming so the data transfer takes place byte by byte so you call that as streaming so the first part of the video or maybe uh, the requested bytes few bytes whichever has been sent by the server that it will be downloaded at the uh, user side that is at the client side so here we have a client and that bytes will be stored in the buffer should be stored in the buffer and the from the buffer uh, the user will be accessing and then the user can watch that uh, that received set of bytes so the by the time the user is watching the first set of bytes the server it it will be you know uh, there will be some time uh, spent uh, spent by the server for sending the bytes there so it is something like you ask the server uh, and then uh, the server will respond with the requested video and now when the uh, user is watching the first part of video server will have time to upload uh, the next set of bytes so that is how at the client side use uh, client side client will be able to download the next set of bytes and that next set of bytes will be sitting inside the um, client's buffer so now once the user watches this first by set of bytes maybe by that time the second bytes would be set of bytes would be ready and then next the user can uh, continue watching the next set of bytes so here user will not be able to observe uh, or experience any type of uh, 
disturbance or any type of glitches here in between why because uh, uh, the server will be sending the bytes one after the other and here provided the users uh, bandwidth is high or the provided this bandwidth whatever is shared by client and server or uh, this bandwidth what the user is having will be if it is high then the user will not experience any glitches so here this type of uh, data transfer where entire video file is not sent at once but it is sent bytes by bytes like part by part and you call that as streaming why because that requested bytes once it is received by the client it will be stored in the client's buffer so once it is stored in the client's buffer that will be able for the user uh, it will be available for the user now and now user can access those set of bytes and start watching the uh, those uh, that part of video and by the time he is watching the next set of bytes will be ready that will be sent by the server and that will be again stored in the client's buffer and then uh, by the time user finishes first part now the second by bytes part is ready and now he can next consume that next part of bytes so you call this entire concept as streaming and uh, here let's take an example let's take a comparison part okay so let's consider uh, three users here the first user second user and third user see the first user is say uh, accessing uh, some uh, uh, website so he's accessing some website so uh, whenever he is accessing some website maybe um, let's take an example of facebook itself he is accessing facebook where uh, he'll be uh, watching some uh, or he'll be viewing some photos that is pictures and all that and uh, let's take that consider that photo photos are of size 160 kbps or something and that's how he is actually downloading their 80 meg megabytes of data so uh, this particular user is just accessing the Facebook page where he is just viewing the photos of size 160 kbps. So that is how the bytes uh, uh, that is required or the bytes that is transferred to this particular person is just 80 megabytes of data. Now the second user let's see uh, Martha she just wants to listen to some music so she is listening to uh, music online maybe or uh, maybe she is uh, trying to download some music so there uh, definitely uh, she uh, may go for uh, a mp3 player or any player wherein she is trying to play the music of size 128 kbps and there uh, 64 megabytes of data will be transferred uh, for uh, Martha and that is only for music and now the last type of user where uh, Victor is trying to watch a video and definitely this video requires little uh, video size will be definitely larger compared to music and uh, photo so definitely in that case uh, he requires uh, uh, he requires uh, more of bandwidth and uh, more number of bytes will be transferred say it is one gigabyte of data that is transferred and uh, the rate for every one second maybe two megabytes of data will be uh, downloaded or that part will be downloaded at the client side that is at the user side okay so you can see here at every one second for music 128 kilobytes of data is uh, received at the user end and here for uh, photos it is again 160 kilobytes of data for every one second is transferred from the server to client okay so this is the bit rate for three different users who are uh, accessing three different types of files first is uh, image file the second one is the music uh, file and the third one is the video file right so for all the three when you compare all the three the higher bandwidth is required for the video and next you can say for the music uh, part you, you require little more bandwidth and the last one is for photos you require little uh, less bandwidth okay right so this is how you can compare three different users and now here uh, always you might have experienced this whenever the data is transferred as it is you may not be uh, uh, transferring the data why because suppose if I take any video file that has to be downloaded uh, it's always like you know the original video size will take a lot of size so instead of that we can have the compressed format of that compressed format of the uh, file can be transferred from the server to the user so what is the meaning of compression it is something like you uh, uh, suppress the video it is something like the quality may be little bit uh, uh, deteriorated but still you try to get the originality there wherein the size of the file will be reduced so whenever you are transferring the data that reduced file size will be transferred to the user depends upon the availability of the bandwidth suppose if the bandwidth that I have uh, is high 
is high then i can download high uh, uh, you know uh, quality video so high quality video depending upon my availability of bandwidth so always it is uh, uh, appreciable or always it is uh, you can say uh, it is good to uh, download the compressed format of the data so what is the meaning of compression we will see that okay so the first part when it comes to compression part we have the compression even for the audio that is maybe if you want to uh, play some music we will always try to go for mp3 player or mp3 music what is this mp3 means it is a compression compressed format it is a compression technique so mpeg layer 3 you call right so that is a compression technique which is followed for compressing an audio file so what is this compression we will just see here okay first of all whenever uh, we are trying to download a, or whenever we are trying to play a music okay first we need to know what exactly is this music what exactly is this mp3 music okay so it is something like we have an analog audio signal so on analog audio signal is the one you can just see this particular graph which you call it as an analog signal a curve over here and uh, always so this original signal this original uh, signal analog signal will be converted into multiple or thousands of samples what is the meaning of samples see this original single analog signal what you can see here this is chopped into multiple parts and how many sub uh, uh, little pieces of the signals are formed or little uh, such uh, samples are formed it is 8000 such samples are formed say okay so it is something like for every one second the analog signal is broken or it is chopped into 8000 pieces and each such piece you call it as a sample so 8000 samples for every one second is generated okay and now each such sample and you can see this is each such sample one single sample each such a sample over there uh, is assigned a particular value and you call that as quantization so what is that you convert that each sample or you as uh, you you know convert that into some finite value you assign a finite value to each such sample and what is that uh, finite value it is in the form of bits this quantized value is in the form of bits each such sample is assigned with a certain uh, finite value quantized value and it is in the form of bits say for example uh, here it is given 256 quantized value what is the meaning of 256 quantized value let's take a power of 2 2 raised to 8 is 256 so the meaning is 8 such uh, um, samples are going to get this quantized value it each set samples are converted into some finite value and that is given as uh, this uh, you know a 256 as value so here uh, each such uh, quantized uh, value or you can say each such sample as i already said is converted into some finite value right so that is each such uh, quantized uh, value is represented in the form of bits is represented in the form of bits so let's take an example here uh, uh, 8 bits is assigned for each such quantized value so here 8 bit is assigned for each such quantized value so for example here uh, uh, originally i said my analog signal is uh, broken into 8000 samples right where each such sample should be converted into or it should be assigned with the quantized value so quantization should take place what is quantization for each such sample you assign some bits you should represent each sample in the form of binary now so how many bits you are assigning for each such sample it is 8 bits you assign for each such sample or 1 byte you assign for each such sample now if i have 8000 samples how many bytes i'll have to uh, represent how many bits i'll have to represent not bytes how many bits i'll have to represent for 8000 samples it is 8000 multiplied by 8 bits so it is total 64000 bits 64,000 bits or you can say 64 kilo bits for every one second I must be 
uh, I must be assigning for each of the samples or convert each sample into a quantized value and uh, for every one second how many quantized values will be generated it is 64 kilobits uh, quantized value will be assigned for each of the sample and 8000 samples such samples will be generated for every one second so this is how actually the compression takes place the analog signal will be converted into samples you chopped into samples and each sample will be assigned with the binary value and uh, that binary value is nothing but here in the form of bits you assign for each of the sample and you call that as quantization and uh, for every one second how many quantized values will be generated uh, or how many bits will be generated it is 64 kilobits for every second will be generated this is how you convert your analog signal into uh, uh, your uh, binary and you call this entire technique as modulation or in other words you call it as pulse code modulation or PCM pulse code modulation you convert the analog signal into digital okay so I hope you understood about this audio compression this is how the compression takes place and you call this as uh, one of the type of that compression is M MPEG layer 3 or also we have the next level of compression called MPEG layer 4 this is also available you can just uh, see here the quantization how was it assigned uh, the quantized value here it is represented see each such horizontal line represents the quantized value and here you can just see a gap between this analog signal and this uh, uh, finite uh, uh, quantized value that gap you call it as an error that means whenever you compress an analog signal some originality will be lost definitely the originality will be lost and this gap uh, between the analog signal and this quantized signal represents that error and everywhere you can notice that we need to we, we should try to minimize this gap so that the originality is retained this gap vertical gap you call it as an error quantization error okay and you can just see here the sampling rate how many samples are generated so these many samples are generated so you call for every one second uh, the uh, number of samples generated you call it as sampling rate okay uh, so as i already told in my example in my previous slide that is uh, for every one second uh, quantization quantized value 64000 quantized values will be generated for 8000 samples so this is how we generate the analog convert the analogs to analog signal to binary okay so definitely there will be some quality reduction and that gap you call it as the error or the quality reduction that is happening and mp3 usually will compress up to um, 96 kilobits 128 kilobits or 160 kilobits up to 160 kilobits per second it can compress the data okay and um, uh, these are the few example rate at which uh, the uh, quantization takes place so the quantization rate is given for internet telephony it is 5.3 kilobits per second and the compression rate or uh, quantization rate it is 1.411 for CD okay so these are the few examples what we have okay so till now we saw the compression about the audio so now we will see how the compression takes place for video definitely for video also we have some compression technique and i hope you all have experienced this uh, uh, compression of video so uh, what is it so first of all the video what is a video video is actually a sequence of images so every image if you take some uh, um, Im uh, image compression technique so i hope you all have uh, seen jpeg so join the pictures expert group so jpeg and you also might have seen png okay bmp so all these are the compression techniques for different images so video is nothing but the sequence of images so if at all i have to compress a video i need to compress this images sequence of images so how exactly i can conduct this compression okay so for that first of all we need to know what is an image okay so if i have to suppose play a video that means the series of pictures or series of frames i need to play back to back so this how many images if i i may have to play in order to get a continuous video so for every one second example for every one second i can generate 
if i generate 24 images for every one second if i generate back to back continuous 24 images then i will be able to watch the video there without any glitch without any disturbance okay so what is the meaning of that if i take an example of this man running so it is something like this is just one image you can see there i may require every minute gesture of this particular person okay every minute gesture images of these this particular person so for one second i should have 24 such images of this person in order to see this man running in order to view this man running so in order to watch the video of this man running i need to have for every one second 24 such images so you call that as sequence of images displaying at constant rate so what is a single image there a single image is nothing but array of pixels you can see here uh, there are colored pixels over here not just black and white it is just colored pixels that we have over here this entire image is made up of array of pixels you can see all purple pixels or blue pixels over here and see black pixels over here and again here black pixels and few you know some yellowish pixels so here many colored pixels are uh, uh, finally they all represent this entire image and what is that each pixel there which is used to represent the image there so that each pixel which is representing an image it is actually represented with the help of bits so for example if i take uh, one color here say black color i'll take so black color is always black pixel is always represented by uh, bit so say it is bit zero which always represents black color and if i take here say suppose uh, any uh, red color suppose if it here red color was there then in that case rgb so actually rgb are the three primary colors red green and blue so here if red color was there then 100 is used to actually represent this red color and here blue pixels you can see red rgb so 001 indicates blue pixels r g g and b what is the meaning of this red is off green is off and only blue is on the meaning it is red blue color okay so this is how the um, uh, each pixel is represented in the form of binary and that each pixel which is used to represent an, uh, one portion of the image so that each pixel is actually part of the image and that image is again finally part of the video so this is how uh, you are representing a particular image that thereby you are representing a video and now if at all i have to come conduct or uh, uh, do the compression of this video or in order to compress the image there i can go with uh, two techniques so what is it one is spatial redundancy technique compression technique or one more is temporal redundancy reduction technique so what is the meaning of redundancy over here so in order to compress the image first of all i need to remove some unwanted things in the image so that i can reduce the size of the image what is the meaning of unwanted things here suppose if the background of this was very white in color in that case unnecessarily all these white pixels will have to be uh, all the time converted or all the time it should be uh, you know played or all the time it should be stored in the buffer so unnecessarily those white pixels again and again will have to store so instead of that what we can do we can just find out those same white pixels what we have okay instead of simply wasting time in calculating and instead of simply wasting the space in saving those continuous white pixels we can just store one white pixel and just create a replica of that right so that calculation time is reduced uh, space also is uh, uh, saved okay so that is how how we first of all find out the redundant places redundant means repeated values okay here you can see blue pixels are there blue background you can see so there all blue pixels are repeated complete uh, many number of times so those repeated pixels instead of uh, uh, storing that in the same pixels in the buffer or instead of simply displaying the same pixels what you can do just one copy of that you can maintain in the buffer and that replica can be every now and then displayed on the screen in order to show the continuous blue pixels so such redundant pixels you have to find out or remove those redundant pixels and thereby you are trying to um, compress the image and you call that as spatial redundancy removal technique.
There is one more way of uh, compressing the image that is temporal redundancy. So what is the meaning of temporal there? Suppose if I have uh, two images, okay, wherein the gesture of the person and uh, in the next image again the gesture of the person are same to same are same to same in that case in that case don't you think those two are almost duplicate images definitely yes so such duplicate images you have to find out and remove such duplicate images so that finally when i have to compress my video those duplicate images i don't have to display right so i have to just take one copy of the image uh, which is found similar there right so we call that as temporal redundancy reduction so such temporal redundancy and spatial redundancy you have to find out and try to remove that redundant pixels or redundant images and thereby you are finally trying to compress the video okay so these are this is how you try to compress the video so you can just uh, see here uh, spatial coding example like I already said what is spatial all blue pixels which are same to same okay so you try to find out that or all purple pixels here whichever it is a color number of repeated values you find out and all those individual pixels you find out and try to reduce that and then as I already said the temporal redundancy is the one take consider two images so image one and image two here you can see both are almost same right so both are almost same try to generate only one image wherein the other duplicate you discard okay so that redundancy reduction you can do and thereby you can compress the video so find out the difference if it the, the difference is very much negligible then in that case you can go for uh, duplicate reduction so you can just uh, see here uh, which are the different uh, techniques used okay for uh, compression that is cbr is one of the technique where constant bitrate is used so wherein you encode the video okay encode the video what is encoding the video converting the video into uh, the digital format so wherein uh, that rate you are going to fix there and one more uh, way of compression compression is variable bitrate that is uh, encoding is done in different uh, rates you perform the compression in two ways one is constant bitrate compression one more is variable bitrate compression what is constant bitrate compression the video is uh, actually uh, encoded converted into binary in fixed rate for example uh, like it is uh, 200 uh, megabits per second so like that so for every one second 200 megabits of data will be encoded uh, varying rate is it is again there uh, rate changes depending upon the technique that you are using if you are using spatial uh, uh, redundancy technique maybe less and uh, less uh, smaller rate is used encoding rate whereas temporal uh, coding changes if you are uh, using then little higher encoding rate you are going to use so some of the examples of uh, compression video compression is mpeg1 cd-rom mpeg2 dvd and then mpeg4 which is uh, normally used now with the internet uh, often used in the internet with less than uh, one megabits per second right so these are the different uh, compression techniques that we have for video okay so you can see now uh, we have uh, three application types three application types uh, in multimedia networking which are those three types of multimedia applications after detail uh, details uh, whatever we have seen about the pro properties of video audio we can now categorize this entire uh, video audios into three types based on the streaming based on the streaming technique one is streaming stored video audio next is conversational video audio over ip next streaming live audio video so these are the three types of streaming applications that we have these days in the internet so what are those three streaming types we will see one by one so the first one what you can see is streaming stored video audio so what is the streaming stored video audio first of all what is streaming streaming is nothing but you don't have if a client have is requesting for some movie for some movie suppose if you want to watch a video uh, through youtube application say youtube application you just click on to a particular link of the video so youtube server i mean uh, youtube uh, client here will redirect you or the request from your side it will be redirected to the remote youtube server 
right whenever the user clicks on a particular link of the video that he wants to watch his client client which is running in user system will redirect the request to the remote youtube server say so once the youtube server receives the request there server will first search for that particular requested video file in its database and if suppose that video file is except existing in its database then that video will be sent back to the client but again whether that entire video file is sent at once to the client no that video is sent part by part maybe the first set of byte or i can call it as part one that is first set of byte is sent to the client so what i already said the client has the client has uh, actually a buffer there so buffer there wherein the bytes there is a place to store the requested received bytes sorry received bytes there is a place to store there once the bytes are stored actually then then the user can start emptying that buffer so what is the meaning of emptying that buffer now the user can start playing the uh, video so here one thing you can notice entire video is not downloaded at the user site only one part of the video is downloaded so the meaning of this is user can watch the video or he can begin the play out before downloading the entire file no need to download the entire file before downloading entire file itself user will be able to watch the um, video so here uh, what is happening at the server side actually see whenever a client is requesting for a video server should have a copy of that video in its database then only the server can send the video so it is something like not a live thing happening there server should have already the stored video only that after uh, once it finds that stored video then only the server will be able to send the copy of that right so this you call it as stored video audio streaming so where server will have a copy of the video already stored in its database example is YouTube application Netflix where you have lots of movies there in its database Hulu also is the so one such example so such are uh, examples are you call it as streaming applications right and here definitely you experience interactivity what is the meaning of interactivity whether the user is able to fast forward whether the user is able to pause whether the user is able to play the data play the video yes so all these options are available example you can take youtube there itself so you can you have all these options uh, available for the user so that means what user is able to interact with the server every now and then with the help of these options so there is high interactivity between the client and server and definitely there is continuous play out so whether the user is experiencing continuous play out definitely yes so here when the user is watching the first set of bytes first set of video there is time for the server to send the next part that is the next set of bytes right so there uh, user will not experience any delay why because user is still watching the first part so by then the second part will store in the buffer so then once he finishes the first part then he can access the second part so definitely there is continuous play out of video as well so i hope this is clear next one we have conversational video audio over ip so what is conversational it is something like you talk to other person and the other person replies so example is telephone right or a, a phone so wherein uh, you have a continuous uh, conversation so what type of applications uh, wherein you have the convo involve the conversation see here none of the videos you are accessing or none of the videos are stored here anywhere in the database it is continuously you exchange the audios as well as the video so what is the conference uh, video conference uh, application we use we have example skype application wherein we can human to human conversation it is gestures are also exchanged plus the audio signals are also exchanged with each other so no video is stored anywhere so you don't require any storage part for this you call this as conversational video audio over ip next we have the third type of streaming application that is live video audio what is the meaning of live so here nothing is stored in the server live something which is happening somewhere live you are trying to watch that and suppose if you miss out that moment of time 
uh, any part you miss out that part moment of time then that part is gone so it is something like watching live is whatever is happening somewhere in some part of the world you watch it and you must watch it continuously in order to get the continuous live experience right example is live sporting event any uh, cricket match or football match or any such live events if you are trying to watch that is streaming live audio video and remember here no video is stored anywhere in the server so this is continuous again continuous play out wherein strict timing is should be followed so these are the three application types streaming stored video audio conversational video audio and streaming live audio video